Well, in a country obsessed with winning the lottery, or the very least getting something for nothing, the yard sale may be the quintessential American event. I take all the junk that I have no use for and sell it to you. You get something you really want for almost nothing, and I get rid of something I really don't want for money. Perfect. And what's more American than taking that fact and making a TV show out of it? That's the background of a new PBS program, Secondhand Stories. Here's a clip. A full day of driving brings us to our next destination, the unclaimed baggage center. The merchandise in this store is the contents of your lost luggage. The center buys unclaimed luggage from all the major airlines and sells everything therein. Even the piece of luggage itself is for sale. The Unclaimed Baggage Center is quite different from your local, ordinary thrift store. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, is that thrift stores are places where people get rid of their things that they don't want. But for us, we have treasures that people didn't want to lose. Now you know where to get a wedding dress. We welcome the hosts of Secondhand Stories, uh, Christopher Wiltshire and John Freyer. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having it's us. It's Freyer, right? It's Fryer. Fryer. Okay, Either there you way. go. Um, that's why I only fill in. Uh, it, this is an amazing idea. You basically, you got an ambulance on uh, online. You bought it online. Yeah, we bought it on eBay. On eBay. And then you traveled across country just going from one yard sale and garage sale and, and places. Stores, yeah, we, you know, we traveled we from uh, New Jersey to Houston, Texas. Why? Well, we were really interested in, in, you know, the garage sales and we, you know, we were interested in the, in, in the second hand. So mm -hmm. we were looking for a way to investigate it. Plus it was a road trip. The idea was that it was going to be a road trip that would pay for itself. So we hit the road, bought stuff as we went, and then when we got to our destination, we sold it all and it paid for the trip home. Did so it actually pay for the trip it, home? It actually did. Well, well, we didn't sell the ambulance. We didn't sell the ambulance and <laughs> actually the, the gas on the ambulance. Well, okay, so maybe. Yeah, so we actually <laughs> lost the money. But lost we lost. thought it would be self-sufficient. Uh, what, what's the, the thing that surprised you most traveling cross-country doing this? Um, I think I was kind of blown away by the one-of-a-kind stuff we were finding, and not so much the sort of cast-off consumer goods that you'd expect, but more things that you would just never imagined. And for instance, never one example yeah. is this wobble light we found, which was, <laughs> yeah. about the wobble light. <laughs> it, it, it's a, a giant, like, highway light, and it's like a weeble wobble with a lamp on the top. And the, 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 <laughs> one of the original investors had invested. We're, sure, we're looking at a picture. This is the wobble light. Unbelievable. Now, this is a, a prototype. This is somebody, yeah. invi somebody, somebody invested invention. money in it. Yeah. They invested George a Skinner. lot of money. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think so. A couple hundred thousand dollars. And so to That's find That's a lot that, of money. Yeah. So, so there we are, and, and he, he wants $50 for it. Yeah. So of course, we have we to buy to it. it. Wait a minute. This man is selling for $50 the prototype to an invention that he spent a hundred, several hundred thousand dollars making? Well, it, was a fa it ended up being a failed invention. So yeah. I think uh, this was just a relic that reminded him. It was a cruel reminder of his failed invention. So, <laughs> so that's why he was getting rid yeah, of it. he wanted to get rid of it. Fascinating. But that's what was so fun. Is By the way, did stuff. you buy it? We bought it. We okay. bought it. And we resold it for 100 bucks at the end of the trip. You made money on this man's poor yeah. man's invention. I think we actually sold it for 150 I'm sorry. But, I, you know, I'm not keeping track. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, what else? What else surprised you? Uh, you know, we... Uh, <clears throat> It became really interesting to see, you know, the, the different types of stuff that you, you find in thrift stores, from board games to old skateboards, and yeah. there's so much stuff that you can, you know, I mean, the way the show kind of works is we find something, and then we start to investigate where it came from, and, and yeah, and the sort of hidden the history, history of, the, of, the, right. of the object. And the other thing is, like, all of this stuff has, you know, you can kind of, even a skateboard reveals so much about, you know, post-war suburban sprawl and all that kind and, of stuff. And, and you discovered, a, I think, a country music fan who had sort of a rare record Oh, collection. Leon yeah. Kegarite. This guy named Leon Kegarite. His obsession had been going to live country music performances in the 50s and 60s, and he was making these pristine recordings. And they languished in his basement until a, a secondhand record buyer came to sort of look through his collection and found them and said, wow, these are worth money, and uh, recovered them. And now it looks like they may have a home in the Smithsonian. So it was like one of those, it's sort of the dream of every collector is, is ha holding on to something for so long that it ends up actually And, and what did it teach you I mean, about, about suburban sprawl, about America today? Well, you know, uh, you just get a, um, I mean, you just get a sense of, of. Um, well, people's biographies are. Well, they, so you, get, you get a sense of people's biography, and 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 and, and you know, you, you get a sense of, you know, especially when you go to a garage sale or a yard sale, you you walk into someone's home, and it's this kind of intimate look at all of the things they had collected. And were they, and, and people are very willing to tell you the stories about about what these things mean? Well, so, yes and no. I mean, one again, another moment from the show was we found, you know, this woman had this uh, sprawl of little baskets and books and you know, kind of kitchen debris, and then in the middle of it was this fur pink lined fur 
hand cuffs. handcuffs, and they were called the kinky cuffs, and she was just selling these for five bucks, and you'd think that someone would be a little bit more protective of, you know, uh, but you're kind of wondering why she has them. Yeah. And she just said, they're five dollars, and you know, I got nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> but she was selling, I mean, she didn't like, you know, anonymously. Maybe bad memories, like yeah, the well, wobble thing. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Did so, you buy the kinky cuffs, by the way? We, we, did. Did. we did. We did. And we <laughs> resold them. I, I don't know, I think we probably got about five bucks yeah. for them uh, as well. Now, are these purchases from along the way at all? Uh, this jacket was a thrift score, yeah. Yes, this was a thrift store. Uh, score as well. So you had sold, I, I've, no, I've known of you, you have infamy before this because sure. you had sold all your, your possessions on the... Yeah, I made a project. I did a project called All My Life for Sale and, and completed a book about it. Now, where, where can I, people see, uh, see the, this? Second Half Stories is on public television, PBS. It's going to be rerunning, and um, we're hoping to do more episodes. And so if you write in an email and let them know, um, we're hoping they'll let us do it as a series. So all right. We'll so I'll, send an, I'll send an email. Yeah. Uh, great. Thanks. It was great to meet you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, thanks for having us on. Thanks. All right. More news night straight ahead. Stay with us. And my next guest, listen to this. He sold all of his earthly belongings on eBay, then tracked the items down and visited them all across the country. His new book is called All My Life for Sale. Please welcome John Fryer. <laughs> Let's walk me through this. Why did you sell everything you own? Well, it started out as a bit of an experiment, right? right? I wanted to, I was planning on, I live in Iowa City. I don't know if you know where that is. It's in the middle of the country. Right. And I was trying to get away from Iowa City, so I thought I would sell a few things. So that you could just move cleanly. So I could move cleanly, because there's no way you can move to New York with all of the stuff that was sure. in my apartment. So I thought I would sell a few things off. And then it kind of got out of hand. And you started selling more and more and more. Yeah, and eventually it became this thing called All My Life for Sale. And that word obviously means everything. So I started to go through the process of selling off everything. You, uh, you sold food out of your cupboards on, on eBay. Yeah, I sold, what did I sell? I sold a can of chunky soup. I sold a, a four pound bag of sugar. And people bought it. People yeah. purchased it and then you mailed it to them. I did. Uh, you know, the, one of the people bought a, uh, one of the people bought a can of Vienna sausages, uh -huh. and I sent it to them. And what I did is I started to ask people to send me updates on what they did with my thing. So they sent me an update on what they did with my can of soup, or my can of uh, Vienna sausages, which mm -hmm. they did what they called a, uh, I, I think they called it a catch and release. Catch they, and release. Yeah, they took the, the sausages, they live in Philadelphia, uh -huh. Mike and Ashley. <laughs> Woo! Uh, <laughs> That's sad when you have to do the woo I for know, them. I'm that's sorry. Come on. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. Well, that, uh, woo. Yeah. Uh, anyway. What a great sound. Right? So, so you so you so you so sent them the I sausages. I sent them the sausages, and then they sent me a photograph of this can of Vienna sausages on a shelf in a supermarket. They returned it to its natural habitat. So, <laughs> so if you're in Philadelphia, the when, super fresh supermarket, don't get the Vienna yeah, sausages because they were in my sound, shelf for a really, I can't believe really, they, really they took it. Time. How ironic! It's at the super fresh. Yeah. It's probably from the late 1980s. <laughs> it is. I think it is. Someone you brought it to my house. So. You sold your sideburns. I did. My I had this. Uh, I had. I did. But they, they're like a renewable resource. They keep yeah. coming back for yeah. some reason. You shaved off your sideburns. My, my, uh, my girlfriend, I guess she became my girlfriend, but she tagged my sideburns because she wanted to get, she thought, she was always trying to change me. Right. And, you know, so I, say, I shaved off the sideburns and the, uh, the high bidder ended up taking them and trying to bring them to the Museum of Art in Pittsburgh to get them to take them as a museum piece. And it's just basically an envelope with some yeah, short took, hair yeah, in it. Yeah, at my house we shaved off the sideburns right, into right. a Ziploc bag. Right, right. And then I mailed it to him. And did, and the person, how much did the person spend? It was a dollar. No, it was a, was it? <laughs> See? Wait, wait, Paul, wait. He would have paid his money. Yeah, was it, it you? was you, yeah. Was, I, sorry, I got your letter. I, I, they're, you never did they're, send, they're you in, never sent me the updates. I yeah, I, yeah. You know, I'm so. I'm sorry. I have them in a photo album. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, 
in little pieces, or did you, did you make a collage with them? Well, I got, uh, you know, they have the, the, the actual binders where the, they uh -huh. separate in photographs. I put uh -huh. a little bit in each square. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Could you send me a photograph of that? Absolutely. People are really worried about where they went, so. I actually returned them back to my, their natural habitat and... and <laughs> I'm about to bust out the biggest awkward TV moment dance you've ever seen. <laughs> what, was there anything that didn't sell? There was. Uh, a half bottle of mouthwash didn't sell. Which I think they brought out here. This is, this is real. This is, uh, unless That's, this is mine. This is, uh, this is, um, yeah. What's, it's tag number, I think there's a tag number on and it. And no one bid on this. No one bid on that. I, li I put it up for... I three dollars. Someone up here said they'll oh, give me three dollars. Do I hear four? Do I hear four? Four dollars. Four dollars. That guy said four dollars. The rest of the Eight. audience is streaming out and going <laughs> to see a better show somewhere. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're you're getting married now, and uh, you, have you gotten rid of? Do you have any possessions? I, you know, it's the, Last, I stopped I mean, selling you, about a year and a half ago. So, I, and I, what I did is I moved into my now fiance's house. It was it was the easiest way to move in because I just because you had drove, nothing left. I had nothing I mean, you left. basically had this half I bottle had of mouthwash. I had a came, car. Right. I right. had a you know a pair of pants that zipped into shorts. I mean, those are pretty. It was cool. pretty utilitarian, <laughs> you know, so I could have shorts and pants. People are going to tell summer. you those aren't cool. Don't believe them. Well, I, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh, now, what are you going to do now? Now you're in a house. When you get married, you get tons of uh, wedding gifts. I know. I'm thinking, you know, maybe. Maybe we could do a new project called All My Wife's Stuff for Sale, but we're... <laughs> I you might want to talk to yeah. someone in the audience just went, oh. I think she's out there somewhere. That's going, me. No way. No, you get a lot of money for that crap. When you get married, you wouldn't believe the stuff that comes pouring yeah, in. Yeah, I can't even imagine what's going to be God-awful stuff. Yeah. You can get rid of all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone Sorry, relatives. Uh, Sorry. They were nice gifts. Thanks for giving them to uh, me. All My Life for Sale uh, is in uh, bookstores now, and it actually is pretty fascinating because you can look through the whole thing and literally see the people that bought it, what you sold, an old retainer of yours, false teeth. All kinds of crap. People bought it, what they sold for it, and then you visiting it. Yeah, I visited them, and they sent me update photographs. You know, there was I was, I was telling you that there was somebody who uh, bought a lunchbox from me. Yeah. And I shipped it to them and actually shipped a lunch in it. And they sent me uh, they sent me a photograph of them eating the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I sent them. <laughs> it took about three days to get there, but so they're they're dead now, pretty much. No, they're least. alive. <laughs> no, they're. There was May they rest in peace. Uh, John Fryer, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, nice to have you here. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around. Two years ago, John Fryer, a 29-year-old graduate student at the University of Iowa, found himself weighed down by his worldly goods. So he took everything he owned and offered it up for sale on eBay. Then he wrote a book about the experience called All My Life for Sale. John Fryer, good morning. Hey, good morning. So how did you get to this stage in your life where all of your worldly goods were weighing you down? Well, you know, I had worked over the summer in New York City yeah. after my first year at graduate school and was working, I think I worked for Sesame Street Interactive as a, as a freelancer, and I didn't want to return. I didn't want to go back to Iowa. I thought, I could just stay here forever. This place is great. I love it. Um, and I had an entire apartment full of stuff to go back to, and I had, you know, a job and stuff. So I basically only returned to Iowa after my first year uh, there because of the stuff there. And so I was driving back thinking, you know, if I didn't have this apartment, um, I would just be in New York right now. That's where all my friends are. I have a job. I could be there. But you're looking at these things, these items you have around sure. your house, everything from your salt and pepper shaker sure. to your tables and chairs, yeah. thinking not only as possessions, but what they mean to your life. Well, that's what ended up happening. I said, I'm going to get rid of some things and started thinking about how I would, how I would go about doing that. Uh, and basically thought I would create some sort of catalog of th things I didn't need until I registered the domain name All My Life for Sale. I had typed in garage sale and yard Other sale. Other people all had those of already, course. yeah. And then this phrase, All My Life for Sale, came into it, and I was a bit overwhelmed by what that meant. How large, you know, that's a huge word. Yeah, when you list so, all of your belongings on eBay, were you surprised that there was a market, that there were people out there literally willing to buy things like bags of sugar from your kitchen? Sure. Uh, but. 
Yeah, people ended up, you know, I put everything up for sale. I had people come in and inventory my house, so they tagged things, and they went through and tagged things that were in my cupboard and tagged things that were underneath my, my dressers, underneath my bed and stuff. So, and the whole point was everything was up for sale for just a dollar. So starting at a dollar. So some things went for less, some things went for more. So almost everything I put up sold, including, as you said, a bag of sugar who, that's sold locally to, uh, to New York City. It and was open. I mean, who buys an open four-pound bag of sugar from a total stranger? Lindsay. <laughs> a Lindsay. woman named Lindsay. Lindsay lives in New York, and she bought an open four-pound bag of sugar. And she, tomorrow night, I'm actually doing a reading event, and she is bringing a batch of cookies that she made from that sugar to the event. So you watch your possessions going into someone else's hands and then taking and on then a life, taking of, their a life own. of their own. I mean, that was, you know, I sold, you know, every time I, I box something up and send it to somebody, I thought, you know, I have this, you know, if you go through the, the, the book has this little history of each object with me. Right, how you I, came how to. How I came to know it. And then as I shipped, shipped things out, I realized that, you know, other people were going to attach history to these things. So I requested them to send me updates on things. And, and you actually started to meet some of these people. I started people. to meet people. I, you know, I sold a salt shaker to Maine, right, Portland, Maine, and they were the first people to send me an update. They sent me a photograph of the salt shaker above the shelf, above their stove, and said that they were using the salt. And so right? now it's become a part of their, the fabric so it's, of it's their lives. It's part of the fabric of their lives, and they said at the end, you know, and I, you know, who knows if, if they actually meant it, but at the end of their, their, uh, their email to me, they said, and if you ever come to Maine, you should, uh, you should stop in for a visit. So money now is less important. I mean, you, I think you, you made a couple hundred bucks, right? Well, in the end, you know, at, at the end of the sale part, by August 1st, I think about $6,000 had come in. Okay. And then because I decided to go visit people, I ended up spending, you know, all of that money in gas and tolls and food, so... You wrote this book about it, which is, in, I mean, obviously it's got to kind of pique the curiosity of a lot of people, and sure. now it's piqued so much curiosity that the next thing you're selling are the rights to your story. Yeah, that is really crazy. Did the, you make uh, a movie about you? Yeah, David, David Heyman from uh, Heyday Films picked up a copy of the book in Book Soup and read it over the weekend, and, and like two weekends ago, which was the weekend of, of Harry Potter, and on that weekend he, he, they, they came back and said, you know, we're interested in trying to make some sort of project about this. So we have no idea what that thing would look like, but he loved the book, so we're, we're trying to figure out what something would look like. So real, real quick questions. Yeah. In the movie, who do you want to play you? I have no idea. I can't even imagine. And when you get the money for the movie, you're going to go out and buy lots of more stuff? No, no, no. I, it, the money for the movie will go to pay off my college loans. Which so I'll break even at the end. Which is always important. I know. John Fryer, the book is called All My Life for Sale. Interesting idea. Well, thank you so much for having me. Good to have you on. Up next, the music group hailed as the Rolling Stones of the preschool set. When John Fryer decided to downsize his life, he wanted to do it in 21st century style, online. So he started up his own website called allmylifeforsale.com to sell all of his worldly possessions. That's absolutely everything. Books, furniture, we're told even his old x-rays are on the auction block. He joins us now from Iowa City. John, good morning. Hey, good morning, Jack. How are you doing? We're doing fine. Okay, so why? Well, I'm a, you know, an art graduate student at the University of Iowa, and I'm kind of doing this as an exploration project uh, where I'm trying to discover, you know, what happens to me when I no longer own the things that supposedly define me and also uh, what happens to my stuff when it gets out there in the real world. So we're basically tracking where things are going and, and I'm trying to sell everything via eBay. So. so you decided that everything goes, are you holding back on anything in your apartment? You know, I had an inventory party in October, and I invited about, about 50 people over to my house to help tag everything, and they went through and tagged the various things in my house, so I'm selling everything that was tagged, and then the rest of what I own. So yeah, I'm selling everything. What kind of success have you had so far selling this stuff? Well, I've been selling a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I've sold about 200 things so far, and one thing that has been unsuccessful, I haven't been able to sell my Mid-American Energy bill, which in January was $466. No one took a bid on that. Stay with that. There's um, a buyer the, for everything. Yeah, there wasn't a buyer for that one. Everything starts at a dollar on All My Life for Sale. Let's talk about uh, some of the, the, the more unusual things that you've been able well, to sell. 
Well, one of the things I sold to the, the University of Iowa Art Museum was some false teeth. These two teeth are fake. There's a long story about how that happened, but they, uh, they paid $27 for it, and the check is actually back here. <laughs> I haven't cashed it yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to take their money. You know what? If I were you, I'd cash it real quick before they realize what it is they just bought from you. Yeah, well, it's, it's in the box there, so. I saw that there was a brick in your house. Yeah, there was a brick. It was the only thing that was in my house when I moved in. And you sold it? Uh, I did sell it. I sold it to somebody in London. Did they and say I, why? Well, they were kind of interested in the project. And they basically, they're sending me a photograph of where it's sitting in their house right now. So. <laughs> and what'd they pay for it? They paid $3 for it. And then I think we split the shipping of $30 to London, <laughs> airmail. How about some of the other stuff you sold and how much people paid for it? Well, the, probably the, t the largest ticket item was the, uh, the Oxford English Dictionary that I sold for $183. But uh, other than that, things have been going for their basic market value. So, What did all your friends and your family think about all this when you said to them, hey guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell everything I own online. Well, I introduced my family to the project by putting all of their Christmas gifts up online this uh, December. So. They had to bid on their own Christmas gifts, so <laughs> they were unusually participatory in that. So Now, your lease runs up in August, I believe. August 1st is the plan. And yep. the, the idea is to have everything gone by August 1st? By that time, everything that's in this house will be sold on, uh, by August 1st, yep. And then what are you going to do? Then I'm going to I'm gonna go on a road trip. And the plan is to go and visit some of the stuff that uh, people have bought from me. <laughs> Once I start seeing uh, where it's gone, I, gotta, I guess I've got to pick the prime locations. I'm going to be doing this in August, so we'll see where it goes from there. The people that are buying this know that they're buying a visit from you, too, as part of this? Yeah, I guess they, I guess they know now. <laughs> we'll, we'll surprise them with that one, huh? Yeah. But John, if this works out all well, i got a lot of stuff in a big old garage at home that I'm going to have you come on over and help me get rid of, all yeah, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to be selling the domain name. The last thing that's going to go is All My Life for Sale, so maybe you could buy it from me and you can do it again. <laughs> I still think you better go cash that check for the two front teeth, because that we'll might not be what happens for a long time. John Fryer, a lot hey. of fun. Good luck. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you later. You take care. Bye. Coming up on 846. When we return, it's time to get your green thumb ready. We're going to be kicking it. Welcome to Life 360. Tonight, we're going to sort through junk. Junk furniture, junk jewelry, junk food, junk bonds. Just kidding about the junk bonds. Actually, junk is no joke. In fact, junk didn't always mean, you know, junk. Back in the 14th century, junk was a nautical term that meant old cable or rope. If you were on a long voyage, you kept your junk because you never knew when it would come in handy. Different junk, same attitude about it. Which makes sense, because in the magical way in which old becomes new again, junk is now fashionable, thanks to eBay, the internet auction site. eBay stands for Electronic Bay, because the company was founded in the Bay Area, which is sort of an irrelevant junk fact. Anyway, thanks to eBay, you now have an excuse to keep everything in your house. Why? Because some human, somewhere, might want it someday. It's kind of a matchmaking service for your stuff maybe even for you. I was driving back here from New York City. I lived in New York City for a summer. And I'd sublet my house. Someone had been living amongst all of my stuff, and I realized that I had lived pretty fine without it. So I kind of came to this thought that I had way too much stuff. Basically, allmylifeforsale.com is a project where I've taken everything I own, and I've listed it via eBay 
and I'm trying to see what happens to me when I no longer own the things that define me. This is all my life for sale. This is not, this is not some of my stuff for sale or like the stuff I don't want for sale or junk. My glasses and my favorite shirts and my favorite records, my favorite everything, everything suddenly became part of this whole process. It is interesting to see like w what has value and what doesn't. One of the things that initially that didn't sell was one of my favorite hats. Didn't sell it for even a dollar. Yet a brown telephone that somebody left at my house sold for like $47. You know, it's just a brown telephone. One of the first things I sold uh, was this toaster. And that sold to Illinois. Girl Scout cookies, a brick, uh, x-rays. I sold x-rays and my phone list. I was a little concerned about this, actually. I sold a bag of pork rinds to Japan. The University of Iowa Art Museum, they bought two front teeth. There, it's a partial. Why did I have this underneath my bed? It is definitely a project about identity. I mean, I was trying to come up with a way to liquidate all of the various things that define me, right? So experiences came into play. And one of the things I sold was the idea of being me at my birthday party. The highest bidder will receive all the free drinks that people might buy me, as well as any gifts and cards, at recess in Tribeca on Thursday, December 28th in New York City. I assumed that it would be one of my friends buying my birthday party. And then, you know, it, with eBay, you know, at 25 cents to change the, the owner of that object. I grew up in northern Indiana. I was 24, and I'd been there my whole life. I think even very early I knew that I was not going to stay in Indiana. Since high school, I'd never had problems making friends. But in New York, I felt like it was very different. You see everyone and they seem to have friends or plans or going somewhere. And you feel like you're the only one who's all alone. And then I found the birthday party. Bidding on it was... Uh, more of just sort of an idea. And then all of a sudden, I had won this birthday party, and I really didn't know where to go from there. I contacted the high bidder, and I invited him to dinner. Once I was on the subway, I started to get a little nervous. I, I started to think, you know, this could be just some really extravagant way to lure some guy to his doom. But I went. John welcomed me in, greeted me warmly. I got some chili, had a beer, and they didn't kill me. And then I bring out a stack of photographs and gave him a shirt of mine, and I coached him on who was going to be at the party. And then when we went down there, he started greeting people at the door, saying thanks for coming to my birthday party and greeting them by name. I started to refer to myself as John, and talk as though I sort of somehow knew about old times with people and just joked around. And then it became really fun because people started to play around with it and play with that kind of role playing of that guy being me. The point of a party is for people to socialize. So inevitably, I guess I was naive thinking that this would be this kind of one moment because it definitely, like he definitely became friends with a lot of people at that party. I think I called one of the girls that I'd met that week to just see if they wanted to hang out. And we ended up making plans for that weekend. And then probably every weekend for maybe two months, I was hanging out with someone from that party. I would get phone calls from people saying, oh yeah, John Fryer 2's here. Do you want to talk to him? And, you know, that was, that was kind of funny for a few seconds, and then it wasn't. If 
I say my friend and I'm talking about someone in New York, it's all someone from John. It really was like sort of a rebirth of my experience in New York. A lot of these sales have been, what would happen if I did this? So I said, you know, what would happen if I sold this birthday party? And uh, now I know. Would I do it again? Would I sell my birthday party again? I'm never selling any experiences again. I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna sell stuff on eBay anymore, hopefully. It's the best uh, dollar twenty-five I've ever spent. Ever thought about starting out fresh? Just a nice, clean slate. Why not get rid of everything on eBay if you're going to do it? Well, one man from Iowa City did, and the sale paid off in ways he never imagined. Rick Lockridge has the story in tonight's Hot Click. I found stuff that, you know, I used to own. For a guy who sold all his stuff on eBay in a rebellion against consumerism, John Fryer sure likes to shop. Well, I don't think they're my size. This thing is gorgeous with the keys. I need to get a pair of eyeglasses because I sold my, uh, my eyeglasses. <laughs> he wasn't always so far-sighted. I have to have a much bigger head. John Fryer used to own everything in this book, but then on his way home from a summer spent in New York. I realized on Interstate 80 that if I didn't have an apartment overflowing with stuff to return to, I most likely wouldn't have left New York City that summer at all. So he tagged his toaster, his high tops, even his own false teeth, and put them all on eBay. Sunbeam toaster. I have toasted 327 slices of bread in this fine Iowa-bought toasting device. <laughs> Next, he started auctioning off experiences, like sampling the cheeseburger at Iowa City's famous George's Buffet. It's the best cheeseburger in the entire world. Then Fryer was inspired to hit the road and visit all the items he had sold in their new homes and collect their new stories. Jen and her daughter Payne were the first to send me an update on an item that I sold. It really became a dialogue between me and the, and the uh, people who bought things from me uh, that I did, certainly didn't expect. Last Friday night, the first public reading of All My Life for Sale. I just couldn't believe that anybody would actually do that. It sounded really dumb. Well, I think it has something to do with the anxiety about our commodity culture. There are reasons that we hold on to things, and there are reasons that we acquire things. You don't necessarily lose those histories when you don't have that object anymore. Rick Lockridge, Tech TV. Now, John insists he never cared about, nor did he seek out the publicity. In fact, he even auctioned off the chance to be him for a CNN interview. CNN found out minutes before airtime, and by all accounts, the network, not pleased. Our VR, our paper oh, we got the kids in there. Yes, sir. We got Eric and Alex in there, and obviously trouble ahead for Kevin and Joshua and Yoshi, our screensavers team, because we've got some ringers online. Land party. Land party! When our next guest moved from New York to Iowa, instead of moving, no, actually it's the other way around. You were gonna move from Iowa to New York, is that right? No, I was in New York. You were in New York moving to Iowa. And I was moving, I, I had spent the summer in New York and I had to return to continue my So you had to get rid of a lot studies. of junk. Well, so instead yeah. of moving, you don't call it junk. He, uh, he sold it, everything. Indeed. Furnitures, knickknacks. Furniture, knickknacks. Bags of sugar. Sure. Iowa squirrel corn. Oh, beautiful. His very own set of, uh, his bridge. False, my, false own, teeth. my own two front teeth. <laughs> and he set out on a road trip. A guy's hanging his head in shame. Uh, he, not only that, folks, I want to tell you, he auctioned off his appearance on CNN to talk about this, and the high bidder appeared on CNN, much to their chagrin. Ladies and gentlemen, the real John D. Fryer is here. Hey, John. Uh, thanks so much for having me. That is like the brilliant stroke. Was CNN well, they, mad? They, well, they canceled the interview, actually. When they found the out what's the moment. moment. Yeah. Well, how'd they find yeah. out? I don't know. I should have just like gone ahead. Yeah, with he it. wasn't as smooth, I guess. I guess not. Yeah. Now there's a book, All My Life for Sale, and you're actually going around the country visiting your stuff. Yeah, I spent uh, about three months traveling around the country after the sale part was over and visiting as many people as would have me. How did this, what was the genesis? How did this start? Well, you know, I was, again, I was living in New York City and I was on my way back to Iowa City thinking, you know, if I didn't have the stuff that was in Iowa, I wouldn't have returned at all. Right. So I, I was thinking, well, I'll stuff's just, what ties you down. Yeah, stuff does tie you down, right? So I was thinking, I'll just sell some things and move to move back to New York. Right. 
And what ended up happening is I started, you know, thinking about how I would frame some sort of project or... Because so, you're an artist. I'm an artist. So I was like, well, maybe I can make a catalog store. And my friends were working at Martha Stewart. So what if I were to make a Martha Stewart catalog that had the junk that was in my house, right? So I start thinking, I start typing in these phrases and typing yard sale, garage sale, and so on. And, and all of those things at that time, 2000, taken. No garage sale back so, then. Oh, no yard of course, sale of course. None of that's taken. So I, I, I type in the phrase, you know, after about 20 minutes, all my life for sale, and it became available. And I registered it immediately, thinking that there was somebody else out there at that very moment, thinking, that, <laughs> right. yeah, oh, I need to get this, which was you know, ludicrous to think that somebody else was doing that at the time. But I registered it, and then the, and then the name became kind of the defining moment for the project. Isn't that funny? A domain name. I mean, it's just the random chance of sign, you know, that, that name becoming, becoming, well, what does that mean? Yeah. How would I go about doing that? It's a good thing so, you couldn't get all my body parts for sale. I know, that thank God. That would have been tragic. It would have been difficult. It would have been difficult. Well, you couldn't have done the book tour. Uh, anyway. Yeah, um, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you sell? I mean, everything. What does yeah, that mean? Well, like, you know, I, I had an inventory party where I invited my friends over to tag things. <laughs> so they tagged about 600 things, and I went through the process of photographing everything and started to write stories about each object. And salt shaker. A salt shaker, for example. I, for a uh, dollar. It sold for a dollar. It sold to this woman, Jen, and her daughter, Payne, in Portland, Maine. Now, have and you visited her? I did visit them. In fact, the, the whole idea for visiting people came from their update to me. People sent me email updates and how, photographs how your salt of how doing? my salt shaker was doing in their house, and, and they were using my salt, which, which you know... It wasn't just your shaker. It, wasn't, it was my the shaker salt. and the salt. And, and at, you know, I had no expectation that that type of trust would be going on when they, you know... You know, that happens on eBay, though, because I bought dolls certainly. for my daughter, and I uh -huh. had my daughter write a letter to the people we bought sure. the dolls from. Yeah, because so I mean, there's this culture of exchange that's happening on eBay. You so actually make a connection. Yeah, a real connection. So they, they, at the end of this email, this update, saying we use your salt, and it's, it tastes the same as our salt, but, <laughs> um, they, you know, they send this, uh, they, send, they say, if you ever come to Maine, come to visit. And, it, you know, I, things start turning in my head, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I've sold things all over the place. A little hint, John. Yeah. That's, you know, really just rhetorical. Most people don't expect you to show up. Yeah. Well, people have been, you know, people make those offers. If you, if you offer to let me visit, You're, I will. He's going to come. So, Ruby Red Chrome Chair. This sold for a whopping $9.50. It sold cents. for $9, and, it, and that was a chair. And the, and the first, oh, that's a nice chair. Yeah, it is a nice chair. The first time I tried to you know, try to sell a chair, it sold for two fifty, and then the shipping on it was forty dollars. <laughs> right, so the person was like, "Donated it to a good cause." <laughs> um, so this this time, you know, I explained to the high bidder that that it might cost a little bit to sell or yeah, to, to, to ship. To ship. To get it, yeah. So we came to this little conclusion that what I'd do is I'd take the chair yeah. to the post office, yeah. unwrapped, put the address on it, and see how many stamps we could put on the back, <laughs> and see if they'd ship it. And, and, and in the end, the, the post, they? well, the po I, was, I was in the post office every single day. So they kind of liked it. I brought a four pound bag of sugar in one day. I brought a Vidalia onion. So when the chair came in, they were like, well, all right, we'll chip it. So, and what's great about it is that, is that in the end, right, they did, they shipped it, they took it. But in the end, when it arrived at Alex's house, the post person had taken the welcome mat and put it over the chair. Oh, <laughs> you know, it has to hide it for, for uh, a surprise. As a surprise or something. It must be a surprise chair. But Alex and his and, and his mom and Cordelia, who's the was the high bidder on the chair, yeah. came to my reading at Book Soup in Los Angeles. Oh, that's so neat. And they brought a loaf of bread. Oh. Homemade bread oh. that I then shared with the people in Isn't Capitola. That sweet? It was pretty it's, sweet. It's really kind of neat. The, actually, speaking of touching, you had a handmade book that what you your dad gave you? What was, no, no. What it was, was a, the story? It was an that? artist book that I had made. You for made my it. dad for so your some dad. time when I was in college. So okay. I make him, I make him this beautiful little book. Little book. Yeah. And you know, I, I give it to him at some point, and I visited him in his office, you know, a few years later, and he's like, uh, "I found this in the desk drawer. I don't know what it is, but I, I think you may have left it here." That's touching. So as you Thanks, know, dad. <laughs> so I, I give him golf balls now. You know, yeah, so he can use. Can't those. confuse yeah, that as a gift, yeah, but. Right. You, you wouldn't be, you'd be amazed when that was going up for sale, how many people emailed me and said that 
their handmade gifts to their father had been returned oh. to them at a later date as well. Oh, so when and you did the e the eBay article, you actually described the I described, whole yeah, story. Yeah, that wasn't, you know, in reality. It's actually what's in the book. Yeah, right? that's what's yeah. in the book. Yeah. I mean, it was really that I didn't really want to sell these things. You didn't? So, well, you know, everything, I didn't want to give up. I'm a pack rat. It hurt a little bit. I was a pack rat. So, you know, all of these things are these kind of my goodbyes to the oh, particular wow. objects. Did, was it liberating when the last thing goes out the door and it's gone? It was pretty great. Yeah. I think one of the appeals of this is, I think, secretly everybody wants to. Oh, I think so. We all yeah. have too much stuff. We do. We just would we're like in, to. We're in a huge consumer culture yeah. where we're told to buy, 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 buy. Have you started acquiring stuff again? A little bit. A little bit. A less than before? Less than before. You know, in the middle of the project, I was, you know, I would go thrift shopping and, and would gather stuff yeah. that I would normally buy right. and just leave it on the rack. <laughs> so I'm pile. actually a really good person to follow around in thrift stores. <laughs> a little pile of stuff. Leave a pile of stuff right there. <laughs> that I'm not going to buy, but I'm would. not going to buy. I would have. I would have. <laughs> So, oh, man. If you're in the, the San Francisco Bay Area, John is going to do a reading at, uh, you're going to be at a uh, clean, well-lighted place for books. For books. Yeah, is that tonight? tonight? Yeah, it's what, tonight. What time tonight are you going to be? Uh, it's at 7. Okay, in San Francisco. In San Francisco. It's on Van Ness. It's a great little bookstore yeah, great and a book great store. place to meet John. The book is All My Life for Sale. And just, you know, go read it. It's really cool. The website's still up? Yeah, the website is still up. It's fully functioning. And, and, and you know, a lot of the descriptions that are on the, in the book are on the site. It's so. such a neat thing. AllMyLifeForSale.com. The domain name that spawned an industry. Anything left? I mean, because I would like this Oxford English Dictionary. Yes, that's, I, that's a good that's deal. Go, that was the high bidder. That, that how much was for that? One hundred eighty-three dollars. Oh, you made some money. How much did you uh -huh. make all told? Yeah, the total. It depends on how you do the accounting. Yeah, Brad. Because yeah. uh, just like the movie industry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Enron accounting. I made five billion. <laughs> but in the end, you know. It, Basically, at the end of the sale, probably about six thousand dollars had come through. But by the time I'd finished visiting people, I was down to about eighty bucks. So, so you're, what you're, comes around goes ahead. around. I yeah. love it, John D. Fryer. All my life for sale. That's the name of the book. John's book has so many more items he's sold. You can read all about stuff we didn't get to, like his false teeth, his lunchbox, including the lunch, and his birthday party, which I saw pictures of and looked very touching. At the <laughs> you didn't get the birthday party. Somebody yeah, bought I, it. I sold it and to attended your birthday who party. Attended my birthday party as me. We're just getting. Thank you, John. Great. Uh, you are John, me. right? I am. Okay. Because you could have sold this for a lot of money. Show I, me the drivers. I license. think I might. Do. We're just getting started, folks. Learn how to clean the crud out of your PC. I, I, I want to see it now. I got to see if I uh, have. He doesn't have it. See, I don't think it's him. And after the break, a sneak peek at next week's land party game. We're going to uh, show you. But first. à 14 jours. Pendant cette période, tous les internautes intéressés pourront enchérir sur mon article. Aux états unis John Freyer, un étudiant de 28 ans, c'est lui là, a carrément décidé de vider son appartement et de vendre aux enchères sur Internet tout ce qui lui appartient. Plus de 1000 objets ont été recensés dans l'appartement du jeune homme qui est visiblement très porté sur les chemises de toutes les couleurs. Il y en a partout dans sa chambre. John a mis en vente tout un tas d'objets les plus divers, des disques, des chaises, des vêtements, des sachets de thé, des chaussures et bien d'autres encore. On pourrait se demander pourquoi John fait tout ça Eh bien c'est très simple, il voulait changer complètement son intérieur et pour se débarrasser de ses vieilles affaires, il a monté ce site qui va lui permettre de récupérer l'argent nécessaire pour changer de vie. Il suffisait d'y penser.